Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10th of 14 days for today's first video. Day 10 will take us to the 21st of October and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe run to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the FSB2 at the end of the video. Four weeks, which will get us into the early part of November. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that the first video we was our 6 a.m. upload and we've also released the EC 30 day slash six weeks okay so please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that please like share subscribe on the bit so we thank you so very much everyone uh but then that right okay let's begin with tropical atlantic then so we have an orange x here in the gulf of mexico uh in the far southern part of the gulf of mexico uh that is disturbance one with a 60 percent chance of cyclone information in the next two days a 60 percent chance in the next five days, a broad area of low pressure over the Bay of Campeche is producing a large area of showers and thunderstorms. Surface pressures are falling in the, re in the region, and radar from Mexico indicates the system is becoming better organised. Environmental conditions are expected to be conducive for further development, and a tropical depression could form within the next day or two while the system moves slowly northwards over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. After that time, increasing upper-level winds are likely to hinder additional development while it meanders over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Regardless of formation, heavy rainfall is expected over portions of southern Mexico during the next couple of days. An Air Force, an Air Force Reserve Reconnaissance <laughs> Aircraft is, uh, try saying that when you have a glass of magic water, uh, is scheduled to investigate the disturbance this afternoon if necessary. They're going to put a plane up and have a look. So we'll see what uh, happens with that one. Otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a quiet period at the moment in, in the wider uh, tropical Atlantic and whatnot. Right, central temperature has updated. We've gone sub-13 now. So we're sitting at 12.8, which is 2.3 degrees above average. And that's provisional to the uh, 10th yesterday, 10th of October. That's going to come down uh, more when it updates tomorrow because it was a pretty cold start. Um, this morning across much of uh, central England there was touches of uh, frost in places so uh, I reckon that might be down to about 12.5 something like that when it updates tomorrow but we shall see these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles in the next couple of weeks on at least today so the red line is at the 30 year upper air temperature average for Leeds we're starting off a little bit below average uh, but we're going to say generally a little bit below average through to the middle and even into the second half of the month later on on into the uh, third week of October and heading into the final days of the month, um, we might see a bit of a recovery in the temperature there, although there is a lot of scatter within that. So I think for about mid month onwards, any time from about 18th, 19th of October onwards, um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty here. These warmer ensemble members up here, colder, cooler, or even colder ensemble members uh, down there. Uh, so I think we need to wait and see where things are going there as we get into the uh, third week of uh, October. precipitation wise, it could be reasonably dry through the rest of the working week, although not completely so, but from the weekend onwards, it does look as though it's getting more unsettled, and uh, that lasting into uh, into next week as well, potentially. With some really quite large precipitation spikes there from around the 15th, 16th of October to around the 22nd or the 23rd, that window. Uh, just there... Temperature anomalies from the 11th to the 19th of October can be around to a little bit above average in the south, near normal further north. And um, precipitation anomalies from the, which might be a bit surprising really, you know, that given given the ensemble graph that we see there is largely um, uh, rather below average uh, from like the 11th to the 17th or the 18th of October anyway. So um, that's a bit surprising. But anyway, precipitation anomalies a little bit below average, uh, above average in the south, near normal further north. And uh, as we get into precipitation anomaly 
that is a little bit drier than normal for, uh, for England and Wales, but to Western Africa, uh, for Western parts of Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt from EarthNostral.net shows that we're drawing in uh, wind from off the Atlantic today. So temperatures should be uh, lifting up a little bit after that cold night last night, especially so up in the north. But uh, the price we pay for that is, of course, this spring, some outbreaks of rain in off the Atlantic. That's how you can make your run. It's looking for uh, midnight on Friday. Low pressure heading in off the Atlantic, being wet and windy weather, especially to the north and west. And over the weekend, increasingly unsettled lots of the weather, plenty of low pressure around the country, showers, longer spells of rain, more low pressure driving in there from Sunday into Monday, and then on into uh, midnight and Tuesday, which as far as we get to, maybe you can make your run. Still not quite unsettled. Notice these heights are rising in the uh, North Atlantic there. Uh, we're, we're beginning to go into a negative NEO type pattern with low pressure around the Azores and high pressure up towards southern Greenland. I say no more than that. I can't. Looks like that. Low pressure again. It's coming in from off the Atlantic. Bringing some uh, unsettled weather on Friday. And then these unsettled conditions continue into the weekend with further low pressure. And even from off the Atlantic, outbreaks of rain at times. Uh, that's been like on Monday. Another area of low pressure pressure developing to our southwest. That will bring bouts of rain northwards across the coast. That might bring some very strong winds with it as well. Uh, and then we get to the end of the Icon Road. We're still looking very unsettled here. So it is a negative NEO type pattern again, but setting up high pressure south of Greenland. Low pressure is down here. We're mild because we bring up wind from the southwest, but uh, further bouts of rain would be likely there. The uh, GFS Midnight Run um, is all much of a much this for the weekend. Very unsettled weekend coming up, I think, with showers along the spells of rain and uh, quite windy at times as well. That, that actually looks like a little bit of wind, sw wind storm potentially there uh, on Monday. Some very tight packed ice bath just to the southwest of Ireland. That might be some, bring some gales too parts of Ireland for the early part of next week. Um, you know, you're just keeping low pressure close to the country through to the middle of next week. Winter from the south southwest, so it will be quite mild, but it's going to be unsettled with spells of rain looking very likely. That's the day 10 chart, 21st of October. High pressure then is trying to get itself up towards Greenland, but with low pressure just around southwest, we're still relatively mild. Um, but uh, but unsettled with more showers coming in. Beyond that, we start building some higher pressure, so it starts to turn drier then uh, as high pressure takes over very close to the country. Um, and all looking rather slack, uh, but generally high pressure dominated as we go towards the closing days of the month. That gets 27th of October um, with high pressure well and truly uh, dominating maybe some uh, fog and that could be possible then. I bet it's quite a mild ridge because it's built up from the south rather than built down from the north. The GFS 6 then uh, looks like this. So, um, again, it's all much of a, a, a much of a muchness for the end of week and weekend. Lots of low pressure, bringing showers, longer spells of rain through the weekend. And then we get this major area of low pressure just to our west, southwest, Sunday to Monday. That brings wet to weather north across many parts of the country through the early part of next week. Quite windy with that too. Um, moving up towards day 10, high pressure again, trying to build in the North Atlantic, get itself up towards uh, Greenland, it doesn't quite come off, so we finish up with just high pressure then sitting around the country as we go into the very extreme range. That's a colder ridge than the midnight uh, run was shown. That's a, that ridge has actually built in from the north, so that will probably bring overnight frost and maybe some uh, fog with it as well. That's how we finish up with the GFS 6 z So high pressure is to our north and northeast, low pressure is to south southwest. We're bringing winds from probably quite a chilly southeasterly uh, direction at that point. If you enjoyed the video, please do you like, subscribe, and just show much everyone but then there. Um, GM showing low pressure heading in from off the Atlantic on Friday, and we keep these areas of low pressure around the country through the weekend. Plenty of showers and long spells of rain as well. Notice it's really going to town, the GM really going to town with blocking in the North Atlantic and trying to get it up towards Greenland. Really having a good go at getting wind into the North. There's a weather front just there, and behind that, 
Calder air. He's trying to get in from uh, the north. And actually, the GM does successfully push that cold air in from the north by the time we get through to uh, Tuesday next week. There comes a minus five Celsius ice flow. Could that bring a little snow to the northern half of the country? It possibly would do if it uh, came up. Remember, GFS isn't really going for this. Um, that's the 19th of October. That looks quite cold uh, as well with the uh, upper air temperature again showing the minus five Celsius ice flow there. Uh, across the uh, country, uh, all being brought about by mid Atlantic Ridge and trying to get itself up to Greenland, that sort of thing. Um, and as we end up at day 10, another shot from the north actually, just on the periphery of that one, but sort of repeated northerly shots there with the GM. And some really quite cold air lurking just to the north around Iceland up to Greenland, very cold uh, up there. So, um, yes, you know, it's a little bit of size of winter with the GM. I suspect it's an outlier though. It's out the uh, ECM is looking so uh, that's uh, very unsettled at the end of the week and into the weekend low pressure is very very close to the country being plenty of uh, wind and rain doesn't go quite to town with that area of low pressure on Monday so uh, that much uh, that's much um much uh, weaker, that area of low pressure. It would still bring quite a bit of rain with it, I think, but nowhere near as wound up, you know, so uh, not the gales and, and whatnot that the others are showing. There, there's that area of low pressure from Monday to Tuesday. Uh, again, there's a way of front through there, but we'll bring out breaks of rain, but it's nowhere near as stormy as like the GFS and, and whatnot. Uh, beyond that, high pressure then takes over, so we turn drier through the second half of next week. Let's have a look at day 10. No signs of that very cold or cold northerly, but the GM um, was uh, was indicating actually relatively mild drawing up wind from a southwesterly direction. Albeit, again, we have got high pressure in the Mid Atlantic and it is trying to get itself towards uh, the Greenland area. So, this is an interesting period that we're going into. I get the impression, let me know in the comments what you think, I get the impression we're going into like a bit of a transitional type period here. Where, well, um, the models are playing around with like Mid Atlantic ridging, with potentially Greenland blocking, um, but don't, aren't, you know, really going to town with it yet. But uh, it looks like, you know, um, incrementally small steps are taking place here to begin to change the pattern a little bit in the North Atlantic. It may be something, it may be nothing. We'll have to wait and see where this is going. Precipitation uh, forecast based on that ECM run from Tomesio.com showing plenty of rain coming and going over the next few days and particularly so at the end of week and into weekends well all that, that bout of rain coming in on Monday next week and uh, beyond that we're going to turn dry over through the middle part of next week as that high pressure builds in just some patchy rain out west by day 10. Means I'll be up on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. It gets us to the 21st of October. There are lots of them. 12 members of the ECM Ensemble, including the control room, with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. That's bringing up relatively mild air from the uh, southwest. Notice that ridge is trying to get going out in the Atlantic, though and trying to head in that direction. This ridge here across um, across Europe, if we go back to this, um, this ridge is like still the leftover legacy of the summer pattern. Uh, you know, this is, this is the warm ridge that gave us the very, very hot summer, kept drawing up those southerly wings. That still wants to, <laughs> you know, that ridge still wants to cling on uh, for dear life. But this is a new development. You know, the ridge in the, north, uh, in the middle of the North Atlantic uh, attempting to get to Greenland all the time. That's a new development. The ridge started last month in September uh, in the second half of the month and was responsible for bringing the temperature down quite a lot in, in September after a very hot start to the month. We, we're doing it again, I think, in October. Had a very mild start to October, mainly courtesy of this ridge that is the leftover legacy of the summer. But uh, slowly but surely, I just wonder whether this Mid-Atlantic ridge is, is the one to watch, you know, whether this Mid-Atlantic ridge is the one to watch is the earlier part of the current wind trailer, because it would tie in with, like, La Nina, if you see what I mean, because La Nina tends to fade the colder weather earlier 
in the winter cold of December is a milder by the end of winter. So it could be something. It could be uh, nothing. Anyway, let's go back here. Right, so 12 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure uh, there over France. Low pressure is up here. Have got some ridging in the North Atlantic. Um, southwesterly winds, so that's relatively mild. Then we've got 11 looking unsettled with low pressure through the North and West of Europe. Notice again, the Mid Atlantic Ridge is attempting to get towards Greenland. We've got 10 here with high pressure from the Atlantic into the... Uh, so that could be very unsettled, of course. Uh, not overly warm. Uh, we've got 10 here with high pressure dominating. That's probably going to bring... Um, Cool weather, maybe some quite cold overnight periods. Uh, this is uh, some down here, some just here with low pressure around there, high pressure free there, but rich over Europe still, low pressure down here, very, very messy scenario, probably quite unsettled uh, and relatively mild. We've got six, including the operational run, that to have the higher pressure out to west and to the northwest and uh, bring in uh, cooler air from, from the northwest with that actually uh, as a low pressure clears away to the east and that does include the operation run. Still summer heights hanging on across uh, France and then we got five but successfully push that trough through lower heights across Europe build up the ridge in the Atlantic sense Greenland and that pulls the wind into a proper northerly but only five are doing that in two weeks time these are the options that we've got again all looking rather messy 26 members of the uh no it's 26 october um 16 members of the ecm ensembles with low pressures of the northeast high pressure to the south a uh, bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge as well. That's very messy pattern, probably relatively mild uh, and dryish. 13 with high pressure, somewhere in the North Atlantic up towards Greenland, extending down western side of Europe. That's mostly dry. Could be some frost maybe with that overnight. 12 with deep low pressure over to the east of the country, combined with high pressure through here. That's going to be very unsettled, of course, probably quite cool as well. And then 10 with high pressure to to our east, low pressure to our west, that's going to be quite unsettled and probably relatively mild. So where this, where is this going? You know, where is this going? Uh, well, let's wait and see. Seven, three, two, lastly, and then we done with this video. It'll be to 500 millibar high time, which break it down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 11th, 17th of October. The coming week, we'll have low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. So we'll be quite unsettled with low pressure in control. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Week two will be the 18th to 24th of October. High pressure around Greenland, Iceland. High pressure in the North Atlantic. Also, the ridge road through uh, Europe. So, you know, that's a good representation of how complicated the pattern's going to be. The high pressure over Europe still wants to draw up <laughs> those southwest winds. This ridge just here wants to pull in cooler or colder air from the north along with that trough. So very, very complicated, but probably relatively mild and drier. Week three will be the 25th 31st of October, high pressure just to our west and southwest. Then low pressure is to the north, winds coming in from a westerly direction, but probably mostly dry in the south. And then, uh, we, so that's week three. Week four will be the 1st to the 7th of November with high pressure winds begin to pull out in towards North Atlantic, low pressure over Scandinavia. That will probably try and bring something a bit cooler in from uh, the northwest. Again, still mostly dry though, with that high pressure in control. Interesting times, uh, this, and I just get the feeling that the long running pattern that we have had that gave all of that hot weather through the summer and really set up like uh, the uh, in September last year, uh, actually, and was a repeating pattern of high pressure over much of the continent. I just get the feeling that that long-term pattern is shifting. It's probably started its shift in September, and I think we still see signs that that shift could be, uh, you know, taking place, possibly even gathering pace uh, as we progress further on through this autumn. So let's wait and see what happens. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share and subscribe. If you so very much for doing that, drop a comment, let us know what about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gareth's weather vids and get them to subscribe as well. And if you do that, you'll be able to see future weather content, including 
future winter updates and live streams. So that brings me nicely on to tomorrow. So this is what we'll be having at the channel tomorrow. We're going to have a 6 a.m. upload. We will have our new feature for America, an extended six weeks forecast. United States looking at the external ECMWF model. We're going to have a live stream at 6 p.m. We will live stream our 10 to 14 day. That include everything that you're seeing here. Um, so, uh, but it will be done live. So, uh, that will be coming at 6 p.m. And then straight after that, 7 p.m., we will have our second Christmas 2022 Sneaky Peaky. So, um, it's going to be an interesting day at the channel tomorrow. Please check back for more. But for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks so much for watching.